Kazakh national handcrafts make up the precious roots of steppe culture. They provide an inside look into nomadic lives. The art of the nation who once lived upon the Great Steppe is pictured here through wood and iron processing, jewelry and felting. Many programs modernize the culture of hunting, falconry, horse training and racing. Take a look inside the Kazakh culture on the program Kaz Art. The art of drawing portraits. Portraits can be drawn in any technique, be it classic drawing, sculpture, graphics, or mosaic. While the main mission of the genre is to depict a person's exact physical appearance, conveying the subject's character, thoughts, habits, inner world, as well as showing his or her historical veracity and importance through it is extremely important. In their purpose and potential audience, the portraits are divided into drawings, busts, graphical items, monumental celebratory and miniature types. Initially, portraits appeared in the ancient Egypt and spread to Greece and Roman Empire. In the Middle Ages, miniature portraits became popular on the territory of the modern China, Japan, Central Asia, Azerbaijan, and Afghanistan. During the Renaissance, Masaccio, Botticelli, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, Tiziano, and other masters took the art of portrait to another level. Портрет, как жанр изобразительного искусства, очень широко представлен в наших коллекциях и в наших экспозициях в том числе. Если речь идет о классике... The active revival of portraits as a genre happened during the Renaissance. But even that, the genre was far from what it is today. Then the portrait was just another small piece in the world of historical art. Portraits and landscapes remained on the background of the major paintings and were not considered important and served the purpose of depicting anatomically exact copies of people. Showing the character's emotional state wasn't the artist's main focus. On the painting from that period, people were mainly depicted as biblical or mythological characters. Only in the 17th century in Holland, the art of portrait had developed into a field of its own, where the artist started looking into the inner world of the model in front of him или даже библейского персонажа. Позже уже, в 17 веке, в Голландии, появляется портрет именно как жанр. It is then that the rich of the country started ordering portraits that were exact copies of their faces rather than a mythological interpretation so commonplace back then. Conveying the character's state in a painting became the new challenge for the brothers of the brush. The development of the graphics and sculpture as subgenres took off at the same time. In the Kazakh history, the examples of the sculptural portraits involved the stone bal balls dated back to the Turkic and Kipchak Hanat. The first Kazakh painter, Shokan Walikhanov, worked in this particular genre more than in others. In the 20th century, the big names of the portrait were Kastev, Nurmuhamedov, Cherkaski, Ismailov, Galimbetov, Kinbayev, Nauruzbayev, Ajiev. They defined what is not called the Kazakh portrait school. <laughs> Kastev's first drawing portraits were of the culturally and historically significant figures. Among them, the last Kazakh Khan, Kinesari Kasim Uli. While working on this portrait, the artist avoided the direct approach. He figured it would be wrong to do this with a subject he hadn't seen himself. He researched the history books and records and drew the portrait in the Eastern miniature style. To show that the character on the painting is a Khan, Kastev sat him on a carpet. The surrounding entourage of the advisors and his warlords was another way to convey the high rank of the main character. Kastev's another peculiarity was in his urge to show the character's impact on the nation. To show that, he depicted the fragments of the environment that the character used to live in. 
He believed that it would help to expose the character's true nature. For example, Jean Boulle Jabayev is shown inside of a yurt. By showing the musician in this environment, Kasteyev meant to show how deeply the artistic roots are connected to the culture and to its people. Similarly, in the Abai's portrait, Kasteyev left the background blank with a great depth of field. This way, he meant to show Abai's propensity to enlightenment, education, and kindness. The talented young poet had outstandingly vast horizons. Среди тех работ, которых к нам передал Государственный Эрмитаж и музей имени Пушкина в Москве, we receive wonderful portraits as gifts from the Hermitage and the Moscow Museum of Pushik this year. The portrait of the Flemish Franz Forbust that he made for the French Queen Maria Medici is among them. The portrait shows Maria's daughter, the Princess Maria Henrietta Medici. Generally, the portraits are drawn indoors and drawn in the observance of major celebratory events. One of the chamber works by the German painter Zutzer is stored at the Kastaves Museum. The Prussian-German King Friedrich the Great, also known as Friedrich II, notorious for his rough temper, is depicted on that painting. However unbelievable, the king is shown as the exact opposite of his typical personality. The kind-hearted, smiling king looks down from the portrait. Later in the course of the artistic research, the art experts found out that the portrait was made during the king's proposal to his future wife. In the festive portraits, the painter doesn't strive to communicate the subject's inner world. The subject's title, wealth, status, heritage and importance are the primary points of exhibit. Through the ostentatious and pompous decor, the painter is to show all these intangible qualities. For example, on this portrait, the Kibbed Pavel I is shown to be the glorious emperor he always dreamt of being. The multiple awards and signs of distinction are shown on his chest. In the atour of the first professional sculpture, Hakim Nauruzbaev, the portraits take a special place. The marble statues of Kurmangazi, Shokan, and young Jambul are widely known and recognized in the country. In the 1930s, sculptures tended to use tough materials for their portrait works. The variety of materials available today wasn't there yet then. The first piece made out of wood was brought to Kazakhstan by Itkin. His elderly series of wood was created in 1930s. Noticeably, it can convey the subject's character through details, while Khachim Zhanov translated it through the whole image. The author of this sculpture of David, kept in the Castillas Museum, is unknown. We, however, know that it is a copy of the Lorenzo's David in Florence. This piece helps us see how the author tried to break the academic stereotypes of the late Barocco. Many artists visited Kazakhstan for the first time as parts of bigger expeditions. The pioneer artist was the Russian Kludov. In their attempt to understand the unknown tribes of Central Asia, these artists drew many portraits of the latter, the portraits of the Kazakh women being of particular interest. Valery Kaptyerov and Sergei Bogdanov and others tried to explore the culture through their works on portraits. The detailed drawings of the clothes, everyday life items and culture required the artist to pay a lot of attention and made them all the more interesting for the modern ethnographers. The 
олардың мәдениетіне назар аударды. Соның ішінде, мысалға, Валерий Каптеревке тоқтасақ. Оның шығармашылығында осы қазақ әйелінің ауыр тұрмысы осы портреттерге қарау тұрып байқауға болы. Қолдарының көріксіз... Let's stop at Valerii Kaptyarov's works. Through his depictions of the Kazakh women, we can see how arduous the life of a regular woman was. The arms uglified by the household practices, her tough life, bad conditions all seem to glare at us from these portraits. Kapterov used red paint to outline the women's images. We believe that he chose red as a way of showing his subjects inner worlds, deep feelings, self-awareness in contrast to the grueling, almost hostile environment. As opposed to Kapterov, Kludov strove to show the beauty of the Kazakh women. He found a new kind of beauty in the Asian faces and tried to praise it through his portraits. <laughs> жырлаудан ол бір жаңа өзіне жаңалық ашқандай болды. The portraits made in 1930 can roughly be divided into two big groups. One tends to show the ethnographic side that results from exotic research endeavors, the others tend to show the cultural speciality of the local population. A new thrust of change took place in the 1940s. Thanks to the social development, the more and more artists started producing the portraits of the political figures and the educators. For example, in his work on Sibir Muhammad's portrait, Abram Cherkaski paid a lot of attention to the mood and the texture of the painting. Sibir Muhammad's portrait in Jazu Barsinda, Surite, Fonona, Bishakhazim Musin, Koyade. Cherkasi added the image of a young dancer to Sabit Mukhanov's portrait. The image of the dancer was to serve as a liaison between Sabit and art. In this context, we shall mention the graphical works of Zaltzman and Lebov. The general tendency to materialize intangible ideas and thoughts became common practice. In the process, they adopted the classical Russian art school realistic approach and mutated it into a new form of artistic inquiry. Білімдерін өзден шығармаларына арқау етіп, жаңаша өзіндік формаларды іздеу мәнерлері пайда болады. In the second half of the 20th century, a group of young Kazakh artists educated in Moscow and St. Petersburg form another echelon of artists. In their works, we can clearly see the level of portrait being raised up high. Gulfairas Ismailova and Sabir Mambayev use the combination of light and shadow and create series of celebratory portraits. To dissect Gulfairas Ismailov's body of work, let's stop by her triptych of Kuliash Paisitova, Shara Zhienkulova and Sholpan Zhandarbekova. In this work, she was able to convey the special place each of these women takes in the history of the Kazakh nation through their achievements. Abir Mambieto's work show a masterful manipulation of light and shadow that he uses to say that humans are an intrecable part of nature. After we became independent, the trend to portrait the historical figures came back. The artists engulf in their work over the images of the Batirs, Hans, and Beis. By exaggerating certain qualities, they were able to enrich their portraits and make them impressive. However, the peak of the Kazakh portrait art had happened in the second half of the 20th century. <laughs> 